So this morning's comments of a coffee, one comes with um, an extra, extra large coffee because uh, the topic that I want to cover this morning is, um, is pretty stressful for, for, for a lot of people and I've been there myself. And uh, so I decided we needed an extra, extra large cup of coffee to go with the topic today. <laughs> All right. So I have a lot of students talking to me at the moment about how they feel about the fact that the new year is starting and last year didn't go according to plan. They haven't moved forward and they haven't made progress the way that they want. A lot of the concern, or at least some of the concern, comes from the fact that we're not um, moving with other people. So there's that feeling of compared to the rest of the group, like you're not moving at the same pace as they are. So you start feeling left behind. You know, my year didn't go well. Um, and part of the reason that I'm heartbroken about this is because everyone else has moved on. What everyone else is doing has got nothing to do with you, right? Obviously, it's so easy to say that from the outside, but you really have to separate yourself consciously from other people's expectations, other people's journeys, and look at your own journey in and of itself. When we were in school, you know, we focused an enormous amount of our mental energy and our emotions on what other people thought of us. Peer pressure, you know, uh, what to wear, what to look like, what to say, who to be, so that we would fit in and we would be part of the group and we would move with everybody else. Six months after you leave high school, you don't care what these people think of you anymore because you've all gone in your different directions and you can't even remember their names. And now you go, oh, it was so ridiculous that I, I thought that I needed to do that in order to fit in. Um, and I don't do that anymore and I don't care. But the question is, have you taken that same comparison, that same sense of I have to move with everybody else and I've got to be either at the front of the pack or among the front of the pack. I don't want to be behind. How much of that is impacting your emotions? And I want you to consciously sit down and separate that and go, their journey is not my journey. All of us have our own struggles. All of us have our own challenges and all of us have different lessons to learn. I definitely had this experience, so I know the I know the feeling and and you know it was so humiliating to be left behind because I would watch other people taking steps that I wanted to take. So obviously a lot of it was like I want to be there. You know, I also want to have passed and now I have to redo the year. I have to, you know, I'm still I'm not there yet. And in my case, I didn't fail years, but it took me longer to get my degree because I was studying part-time. So while friends of mine who were doing the same qualification journey were qualifying and were finishing, I wasn't even finished my degree yet. And that was heartbreaking for me because it made me feel slow and stupid and you know, like the special case and I'm watching them all start their great careers and I'm still you know, struggling in the background here. Over time, you realize that you know, being behind or being in a different place for a year or two is completely meaningless in the bigger scheme of things. In 10 years time, it won't mean anything. You know, at the time, being a year behind is like everything, like losing one year in your journey or adding one year to your journey feels enormous. In 10, 15 years time, it's not going to matter. In 10, 15 years time, what's going to matter is the decision that you made at the time. If you allowed that to make you feel so useless that you stopped your journey, that's what's going to impact you in 10 years time. The fact that you stopped your journey because you didn't like how it made you feel that you weren't moving as fast as other people. In 10 years time, you, you're going to go, crap, what's one year? What would it have mattered if I did it for another year to actually get that qualification? And it's never really as simple as that because one of the other things that impacts us is the feeling that if I fail this now, I'll never pass it. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that impacts your decision about what to do. Sure, we feel bad about not passing and other people passing, but one of the biggest fears we have is what does this mean? Does this mean that I won't be able to do it? And especially if you look at the year and go, you know, I put effort in and I tried and I did what I could and I didn't make it. What if I'm not good enough? What if I can't do this? And that could impact the decision of what you do now. I'm going to change my goal. Uh, I'm going to do something else. 
I'm going to change what I'm going to do because I think I might not make this. That decision is going to impact you in 15 years' time, 10 years' time, 15 years' time, when you look back and go, I could have tried again. I should have tried again. So one of the th things that I want you to do is try and step back and take a look at 10 years down the line. When there's less stress, less emotions, you're more objective, and you're looking back over your life and go, one year wasn't really that much. I'm 41 now, <laughs> still haven't come to terms with being 40, but anyway, and at the time, the fact that I was only, you know, that, that I only qualified at age 28 was heartbreaking for me because the ideal journey was qualifying at 24. You know, if you came straight out of school and you did everything properly, you could qualify at 24, and I, I took an extra four years, and that broke my heart. I felt so stupid and so useless. And now that I look at that, the difference between qualifying at 24 and 28 is irrelevant. It doesn't bug me anymore because those four years, nah, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that I did actually qualify. That's what matters. What I realize now is that my journey was different for a reason. If I had have had the journey that I wanted, then there's very little likelihood that I would be doing the stuff that I'm doing now. And I love the stuff that I'm doing now. This is like, I feel like this is what I'm meant to be doing with my life. Now, I had a choice, and you have a choice. When things go wrong, when you're looking at this and going, oh, I have to repeat the year, you have the choice about how to deal with that. 